we're on day two today. I'm happy to see you guys. I'm happy to see that people enjoyed the first video of this whole thing. Um, you know, I was hoping that people would enjoy it, but I didn't expect such a positive response to it. So that makes me over the moon. It's a Sunday today, which means we have time. We have plenty of time, we have plenty of time to practice. Now, in the last video, we were doing the arm uh, bones, the bones, the entire structure of the arm. And I think it's important that in this episode, the first thing we do is we go back to that. But we're not going to look at it yet. We're going to draw what I can remember from my head. We're going to draw that first. And in today's video, I'm doing this differently. I'm doing it digitally. But by no means uh, does that mean if you don't have anything digital that you can't join in. Uh, just grab a piece of paper and a pencil. That's all you need. I'm doing this so it's a bit clearer to see, but I'm going to be hopping back and forth through digital and traditional just because of my love for traditional drawing, right? I, uh, I think there's definitely more feel to that. But yeah, you know, we've had, uh, we've got coffee, we've got everything we need. I had some olives and cheese, so we've got all the energy we need. I've already spilt a mug of this today. Hopefully that doesn't repeat, but yeah, we're going to get right into it. So as you guys can see, I've created this beautiful document. Uh, oh, dear, didn't turn anything. Off. Fundamentals day two, torso skeleton. That's what we're going to look at today. But I, like I said, we're going to start off with a little bit of practice. I have the references for today ready with me. And all of the references that I use for these videos, I will be putting in one, one Pinterest board. So all of them will be there for you guys to have a look at and to follow along. So if you go down into the description, the link to it will be there. So this is what we're going to be working with today. But first of all, let's start off with what we were doing yesterday. So I've got my pen If for the information today we're using. Yeah, I've got my microphone right here, so I actually can't see the bottom of my screen too well. Uh, I've got a brush here from TB Choi. I found her brush online, and that's what we're going to be using today in terms of the tools. So yeah, let's, I think, just get straight to it. Trying to memorize what we saw. I remember distinctly this sort of shape here for like the shoulder blade that we start off with. All right, I'm gonna sketch this out. Then we had the connecting bone here. And like I said, I, the big reasoning behind this is I want to teach people as much as I can. And I think the best way to teach is by learning as well. You know, I have a lot to learn and I want to be able to, you know, not only walk, was it talk the talk, but also walk, walk the walk or whatever you, you call this whole thing. I want to be very technologically skilled with all this. Also, I forgot to put on my drawing glove. That's, that's not helpful. There we go. So I want to have all the knowledge that I need to be the best at what I do. And I think the best way to learn it is to go through it in like a series like this. Oh, damn, it's ridiculous how much, <laughs> how much a glove hurt, hurts, it helps. See, at this point, I'm already forgetting <laughs> what the structure would look like. I remember there was uh, something that connects here. I'm gonna do this here. I'm almost using this as a way of revision. Well, the way we revised back in, in school, you would often make your notes and then on the next page, you write them out again. And I don't know if that's the best way of remembering something, but it's the way I know. So yeah, that's the one thing I definitely do not expect to remember is all the finger bones and all the arms there. But like I said, I think it's very important that we do practice this and especially for those, those of you who watched the first video, I hope that you did get um, get everything out of that and then practiced it over again. 
because that's just the best way you're going to learn it. I unfortunately haven't had time to do that yet because uh, just life in general and just some things that you have to do. But other than that, I already think this is wrong. <laughs> I'm going to check back in a minute. But first of all, I want to obviously have to compare and then correct. That's the best way to learn. So next, I know there's the double bone that we have here. No, there's the, I don't know what meniscus, I think this is what that, that's called. I was <laughs> listening to a podcast recently, funnily enough, after I made that video and they were talking about meniscus, which was like this weird thing that's in between your bones. I don't think we have to be mega accurate here, but like I mentioned, I want this to be sort of, sort of there, as close as I can. I will do the hand a little bit. I remember there being something like this here. And this this is just the best way that I know that I can learn this stuff is if I keep repeating it and learning it. So let's do the fingers. I remember the fingers had the weird shapes. So we'll go in like that. We are going to compare this afterwards and I'm probably going to laugh at how, how many things I've missed, but that's just all part of the process. And I don't know if you remember from the previous video, but we talked about the fact that you don't have to always be the most accurate with these things. Uh, I think sometimes the shape design and the choices you make designing the shapes will make your art look a lot better. So keep that in mind whenever you're drawing. Uh, you know, the more you learn about design language and creating your own design language, the more your art will develop your distinct style. I'm already doing this wrong. <laughs> All right. So roughly, this is what I've drawn here. Now, I've got my book. We'll compare this first. So let me just grab this screen. I've got the book from last, last time. All right, so if I hope you guys can see this. If we compare. And now we have a look at what we have here. This is straight from memory. That's not, nah, there's some, <laughs> there's some mistakes here, but it's not bad. I mean, that is mostly accurate. I don't, definitely the hand looks a little bit weird, but, and the top of the shoulder, the, was it scapula, the thing I spelt wrong last time. I think that's not too bad. Obviously, we're going to correct it now, so I'll grab this to the side. And I do hope you are following along. Like I said, make sure you grab a piece of paper if you don't have a digital surface to work on. As you can see with the digital stuff, it gives me way more sort of room to play around with. So mistakes can be altered easily, but I think... Uh, just drawing normally is completely fine. And it's actually way nicer in terms of the feedback you get and how you paint the feel of it. That's what I'm saying. It's like, you know, having an electric car versus a V8 engine, you know, I think, I think one's, if one's better for the environment or not, but the other one obviously sounds better and it has way more soul to it, in my opinion. And this is the same thing. Drawing on paper also kind of has that feeling, but we cannot deny that digital art has a lot of upsides to it and it allows us to work a lot faster. Anyway, going back to back on track, we have, I'll get the reference for this real quick, just to make sure I'm even more accurate. And like I said, the, all the references will be on my Pinterest. So do go ahead, check that out. I also show you the references we're using for today's practice right after this. So let's have a look. There is what I was using. OK, 
Okay, so what we'd have to do is we have to correct the, oh, let's see, oh yeah, I can paste this right here. Forgot about that. Cool. So, as we see, we have to correct the shoulder shoulder blade here. This is wrong. This It should have been more like this with a cut in and then the shape changes here. We have this bit that connects to it. I didn't know the connections here, so as you can see, I did it as like a whole shape rather than finding the connections that I needed. But yeah, more or less, I'll add them in now. This bit's important, the little meniscus part here. I do hope it is the meniscus. Joe Rogan's podcast, hopefully, will not let me down at this point. And then this bone, I do have to alter this a little bit. So this was actually more or less like that, more rounded over here. And then it connects to here. And we have a little bit of detail in there. But like I mentioned, I still think this came out a lot better than I was expecting it to. So I'm very happy with the results so far. I was not actually... Uh, Obviously doing something like this with the torso, which is what we're going to be doing next, is going to be a lot harder, but that just means we need to practice more. That's all that it is. It's a bigger challenge that we need to face. So let's fill this out. Cool. All right. So course corrected. I'm not going to do much of the hand at the moment. I think it's better that we set, uh, separately focus on just the arm whenever we're going to be doing that. But I'm happy with this. So I'm going to title the thing uh, Arm Bones Practice. And we're going to go boop. And now, now comes the, the main course. And that is the torso. Now, this is my references page. I'm going to have this on my other screen. I want to show you guys it here first. Um, just make sure I don't make an oopsie and yeah, there we go. I am recording the audio. God. Yeah. So this is the references we're going to be using. We have the whole skeleton. I more want to focus on this whole thing, like the whole torso here, including the spine. So this is going to be the main reference I use. This we're going to connect afterwards. So in a later video, we'll start connecting these parts. At the moment, I think it's better that we focus on this because this is a very complex structure. I think this is going to suck <laughs> learning it. But we can already see that we have the parts that we were learning in here. We have the... I need to f actually find out what it's called. <laughs> the sh Is it a shoulder blade? Let's see. Shoulder blade. <clears throat> yeah, so it is the, the shoulder blades. So we have them already from our previous practice. We know the, that they exist here. And then we have the top bone connecting to them. I do need to learn the actual words for all of these. But we have that connecting. So now let's just go straight into it and start putting all this in. I'm going to get this onto my other screen just so we have all the reference that we need. More isolated. Cool. And then we are ready to go. Pop this here. Cool. So, new layer. <clears throat> and now the shape. I think it's best that we do some of the stuff that we're usually taught at school, right? So whenever you're drawing a head, there's the Loomis head method, that the way you draw the circles and everything of the of the head. And I've got a little technique that I learned from a YouTuber here. Uh, if I remember which one, I'll put it in the description. But we make this little circle, and this is gonna be our rib cage. And then I'm gonna draw the line going past it because this is going to be the neck and the spine, which is also a complex bone in itself. We really are starting at the deep end here. It would have probably been a lot easier if we studied the muscles first rather than the bone structure that's behind it. But you know what? That's, that's completely fine. 
I think the tougher the challenge, the more we're going to learn. All right. And now we're going to split this here. This is where our arms are going to be. And I want you guys, when you are doing this, I'm going to go into full screen for this message. You guys, when you're doing this, you absolutely need to be looking at your reference. You need to be looking at your reference. This, uh, I, don't, I got lost there for a second. Now you guys need to be looking at your references when you're doing this. I can't stress that enough. I think listening to people or other artists when they talk about not using references or using references is cheating. If anyone ever tells you that, please do not listen to them. This is uh, terrible advice. It's advice from someone who wants you to stay behind as they grow. Uh, it's it's toxic advice, I'll put it that way. Use your references. And even when you're just, you know, the best of the best artists in the world, you will still be using references. It's it's just a way of you always checking that your work is to realism. Like it is to a point where if someone looks at it, they're going to know it's professional. So make sure you do use your references and please do not listen to people telling you that it's cheating. Same with tracing. I think tracing has a very big part in an artist's career. And those people who tell you that they never trace are also full of shit. So don't listen to them. Make sure you are doing your work with references. Now, back to the work. <laughs> Please be checking back. Honestly, you don't have no idea how important it is. So I'm breaking this down into shape, basic shapes that we can see. I think this is the easiest way to sort of chew, chew down on something that's sort of really complicated. Uh, so if we start with basic shapes and we start blotting in everything that we want to see in here, that's going to make our lives a lot easier. So what I can see here that there's almost like a triangle here. There's like this little diamond shape. This is where the spine goes on. So we'll leave that for a little bit later. But to this triangle, we have the bones that we were just learning connecting to it. So I'm going to do rough, roughly here. Now I could cheat here. <laughs> I could cheat here with, with the use of Photoshop. I could have a very cool cheat code by the name of symmetry <laughs> and I could put it right there and I'll be like, oh, look at this, boom. You know? But we're not going to do that because we want to practice. So. I just want you to be aware of that this tool is here. If you are someone that uses Photoshop or any digital software, I think most of them have uh, symmetry as a tool. It can come in very handy when you are trying to do some quick work. So, right. Check in the reference again. After this triangle bit, we have some of the ribs starting to connect to here. And the thing about ribs is they are not just lines going outwards. They are in a 3D space. They come all, all the way around. So that's very important to keep, keep in mind and know that they are actually as much in front as they are behind. So from what I can see, I'm going to actually plot in the shoulder blades here just so we have a good reference. So I'm not actually expecting this to come out very well first time. Uh, to be honest, I don't think I have actually drawn a rib cage before. And this is just as much of a challenge for me as it will be for you. This is a very complicated structure of our body. And learning how to draw it properly is not easy. There is a lot of overlapping shapes. So do not be afraid if you have to try this a couple times. I think I'm going to have to as well. So expect this to be a bit longer. <laughs> but more or less, we've got the shoulder blades in here. And now we're going to start filling in more of the ribs. This one's a little bit not where I want it to be. Cool. Then under here, and we go in again with another rib. At the moment, we are focusing on the ribs that are present on the front. And what I'm also doing here, I recommend you do this and start learning it from the beginning of your art journey, is we are zoomed out. We're not going to be zooming in much. Reason why is 
as soon as we start zooming in, we're going to start focusing on detail. And we do not want to start focusing on detail yet. This is not the stage where you want to be doing that. All right. As you can see here, we've already got the rib cage or the rib going around. It's already starting to wrap around. So just so we're aware of that. And then we go in again with another one here. And during this whole time, I'm actually following the little guide that we made ourselves earlier. Uh, so the circle that we can see in there. So I'm currently on the third rib and I think I am not actually doing this the complete right way. I think it needs to be a little bit closer to each other because there's a, how many ribs are there? First of all, let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nine ribs on, I think, each side. So got to keep that in mind. Uh, this might also be a little bit too far away, so I'm going to come in here, correct that a little bit. There we go. And then we go in with the third one, which is that one. The ribs, from what I can see at the moment, they almost have like a little C shape here and then they go outwards into a bigger shape. And I, I do think I should be a little bit rougher with these drawings because I'm taking a bit too much time on here. But you guys, if you are at this point of the video, do let me know what you enjoy about these uh, the sort of style of video, because I'm very happy to see that people picked picked this up and uh, enjoyed it. I was not uh, expecting such a positive response to this overall, but I was. I have to say, this is something I really did want to make. I've been very happy to make this uh, because, you know, one it gives me what's the word Ac accountability to practice my art. And two, it also does it in a way where I can do it with you guys. And, you know, that's almost, that's a win-win for everyone. So please let me know what you do enjoy these videos and <clears throat> if there's anything you would like to see more on them. I am very happy to explore. My Photoshop is being weird. I press B and then it goes back to, back to the lasso tool. All right, next rib, we have a little bit more space in between. So I'm gonna go do that a little bit like that. Cool. And it's absolutely gonna suck that I have to do this so many times, but that is, that's practice for you. You have to endure it. It's, it is, practice almost is some form of suffering, a little bit of suffering, because a lot of the time it's something we do not want to do. And we have to remember that with suffering, we learn and we become better versions of ourselves. So there is no good without suffering. That, thus, this is important and thus this is necessary to grow. Right, yeah, I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm almost getting like lost in these because there's so many things going on at once. And the shoulder blade is behind the back ribs as well, so this is, like this is where it will be. This is where it's gonna be mo covering mostly. All right. <clears throat> I'm gonna jot this shape in here as well. So what this shape looks like is almost like a sh shield. I think it's gonna be make it easier for us to have a look at. This is that weird pointy thing at the bottom of your rib cage. I don't know if you've ever pressed in here to check, but there is like a little spike at the end of it. That's what I'm drawing right now here. I do want to tidy this up a little bit, but cool. More or less, we've got this shape here. I think it's important that we use these things as guides as often as we can. I'm going to draw in the last bit here. And the, interesting enough, the last rib splits into three at the bottom. So I'm going to keep that here as a reminder and then since we're on the fourth one here, the one under it as well splits into two. Damn, our bodies are complicated. But yeah, go in again. 
and this one goes behind again, bang. And then we've drawn that one. But over here, it splits into like two. So I'm gonna draw that. <clears throat> and that goes in above here. Jesus, <laughs> man, that is a, uh... I know a hundred percent right now. It's not, well, it's not fully that because this can come in handy, but I know that this isn't something that I thousand percent need in my art. Actually, no, for, in my case, because I'm the one that likes to sort of draw horror slash like darker art, I think it is very good that I do learn these things. But for most of us here, I don't think this information will come in handy unless you are drawing the male torso or the female torso that's very lightweight. And then you start seeing the bones and you know where the bones are. So that's where this will really come in handy. But honestly, like I mentioned before, this is where we'll start to learn how to simplify these things and how to make sure that we're doing what we need to be doing and we're putting in the shapes that we want to have and developing our art style. That's what it is. But always, always important to know these things. Even if you think you'll never use this, I might never use this information, but there might just be a time where this will be a lot a lot more handy than I initially thought it would be. The bottom of the ribcage sucks, man. <laughs> There's so much going on. Let's uh, clean this up a little bit so we know what's going on. So what is going on with this? Okay, you know what? I'm gonna quickly go back to the magic keyboard because that's not let me down. This one's being annoying. Let's see, connected. B, E, B, yeah, there you go. That one's playing up. I don't know what's wrong with it. I'm thinking of getting rid of it, but all right. Okay, no, I don't, it's not the keyboard. It's Photoshop, I guess. I press, I press E and then it goes back to whatever I was using before. Cool. Unless it's my, no, I don't know what it is, but it's very annoying. Right, God, there is so much going on here at the bottom. It is strange to know where I'm, where I'm at, but I know this bone here is going in here. Okay, we've lost this bit that I was meant to have in here. Yeah, like I said, I know this is not gonna look perfect, but. We are learning and we will go back to this and we will learn further again. So we've got the big opening here and we can see that the bone is traveling behind it. What I'm going to start doing is shading these bits in because it's getting a little bit too complex here for my liking. I'm one that does like simplicity. So as soon as you've got a little bit too much going on, you might get a little bit harder to understand, but yeah, oh, that, yeah, that helps out a lot. <laughs> right, we have to remember the shoulder blade here, and if I am getting stuck on what bone goes where, all I have to do is follow the path of the one above it. So I'm gonna sketch this in. Oh God, what is wrong with the software? <laughs> that is so annoying. I Look, I click E. What is that meant to be about? What I'm gonna start doing is just hold. Okay, no, it's just completely broken now. Usually when you would hold something and let go of it, it'll go back, oh, now it did. But now it's just screwing up. Oh God, I hate. I hate when things like that happen. And I just made a video on Rebel and I wish I could be using that instead at the moment, but I just do not have the money to buy a software at the moment. 
So unfortunately, for the time being, I will have to use this. But we'll see. I might switch over to something else. I don't know. I've been uh, getting slightly annoyed with this software more and more lately. Although it is obviously the monopoly of like software, I think there's a lot of people that are making better alternatives out there, especially for artists. I wouldn't say for photography, like photography and graphic design. I don't think you can really be it at the moment, but yeah, it's not, it's not ideal at times. It, get, it does get really annoying. All right. So I don't, See, we have a different angle on the shoulder blade here, but there, that is also complicated. It's a tough one, this one. It is very tough. So do this at your own pace. Don't be uh, discouraged if I'm going at all too fast. Pause the video. Take your time with these things. I would prefer to take more time on things like this usually, but I do also want to get another one of these filmed today. So, and I think the next one we might focus on the skull. So we'll see how that goes. I love, I do love the skull. Don't know what it is about the skull, but I do love it. And then we're going darker in here. Cool. Man, look at this. Like, I'm kind of proud of myself that I'm able to draw something like this because something that we as artists forget to do is, God, that is annoying. Look back at the progress we've made over these years. Like, I could have not drawn this when, what was it, say, three, three years ago. I would have really struggled with something like this. Now, even though I am still struggling, I think this is a very difficult thing to draw. I'm still happy to be doing it right now. And I think I may have messed up the proportions a little bit here. But let's fill this in and see how it looks. I... Damn, the Photoshop is not happy today. I just don't know what it's up with it. You guys probably can't understand, uh, can't see fully, fully what's going on. Like, look at that. What is this issue? You probably, you guys probably won't understand what's happening here because it's a bit harder to see than when, when you're actually using the software, but it's being so annoying. It just keeps switching things when I don't want it to be switching. All right, draw the bones in behind. Right, 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 right. Shoulder blade in. Also going to make it darker so we know that there's something there. And then I'm going to sort of get rid of these things. Maybe it's just not liking the amount of RAM that's being used on my computer or something because it is slightly struggling, but that should not be an issue. That is a really stupid issue that's happening right now with the tool selection. I, as, as an artist, I want to be here and I want to be just clicking one button and I want to be creating. I don't want to have these weird issues and things like that really do get annoying. Like just, I can't do it because it's going to switch tools for me all the time. Like, uh, you know what? I'm going to quickly restart and come back to this. All right. So I've gone, restarted the software. I've also changed the recording. So it's recording my whole display rather than the application window in case that was doing anything but i think we're good now i think it is fixed because it's not swapping yeah there we go cool i've also put it so you can see the reference that i'm working on yeah i think that's actually a little bit easier plus i'll be able to look at it even more without constantly going to my other screen so yeah another win-win 
Uh, but now, <laughs> now I'm used to going over here. Right, so we've got these bones connecting up to here. And then this is going over here. I do believe this is going to come out a little bit wonky, but you know what? This whole torso is kind of wonky, so. Oh, look at that, it's fixed. So it wasn't the keyboard. <laughs> Poor keyboard, it got all the, all the shouts at it, but it turns out it was just Photoshop being annoying. So what we're doing now is we're almost just, well, we're doing the exact same thing that we've been doing for, for this entire video. But so you can see this does look a little bit different on this side than this side. There's like a more of a gap here. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. I think uh, doing these recordings also helps me out a lot because like, I mentioned this in the previous video, but I, I want to become much better at speaking in general and not having to rely on the script, not having to rely on planning, just being able to really talk about things whilst I'm doing something. And doing something like this is going to help a lot because I'm having to not only draw, but also think and talk at the same time. So it is a big challenge for me, but I am up for a challenge. And the more I do this, I know the better I will be at it. So I think that's the best thing that we can all do is just practice these things and get better at it over time. And I know it's going to take a while. But great thing is I can watch this back and then listen to myself and see if I was saying anything stupid or <laughs> if I was talking about what I should be talking about. But this is just a great way for us all to practice something. That's why I really believe in this. <laughs> I don't know why I'm so excited to be doing this, but I, I think this, I think as someone that is trying to make some videos and YouTube content, a very difficult thing to do is find what you want to make the content on and what you want your niche to be. I've known for a while now that it was going to be something to do with art. Like it had to be to do with art because it's the, it's the skill I've put most of my time into and most of my life into. So it has to be something surrounding that. But what is it? What do I do with it? And for me, what I want the most is I just want to be real with it. I want to be, I want to be talking about some of the things that not every, not every art YouTuber talks about. I want to get into like just life as an artist, you know, how, how that looks for some people and how we can work on that as well. I think it's very important that we focus on many aspects of our lives as artists. You know, it's not just about being skilled at drawing. It's about sleeping well. It's about eating well. It's about movement, all these things, you know, that it's crazy how many these things need to be taken into account. I know for most of my life, I didn't care about that. Like now I absolutely hate just sitting in one place and doing the same thing at the same time. Like I need movement in my life. I need to look after all these things. So I want, I want to be like that kind of art YouTuber, you know, I want to be, I want to be the guy that helps everywhere I can. And yeah, it's in the meantime, it's also very fun making things like this. So it's uh, definitely, definitely grateful that I can be up here doing YouTube videos. Like it, it's, it's a good feeling, you know? But these ribs suck. <laughs> that is. Wow. I'm also at the same time trying to copy what I've done already. Um, looking at the reference, but 
I'm also just trying to do what I've done before here because it is pretty much the same. So these ribs are going here, then that goes off to the bottom, goes inside again. Oh God. Yeah, that uh, left hand side is not looking as great as the right hand side, I can tell you that. Damn. I also think the shoulder blade that we've got here is a little bit too far out, so I'm gonna grab that, put it in a little bit. Cool. And then we're gonna go down here again. Oh no, there's meant to be three there, isn't there? No, no, did, wait, did I do it right? Yeah, I think I did. It's one, then there's another one. Oh God, no, there we go, like that. I'm getting very lost in this. So yeah, look, be sure to take your time with this and really have a look at what you're doing here because man, it is so complicated. This, I might have to go into our, yes. Go in a little bit with the liquify tool. So, yeah, just make sure we've got the right shape. There we go, that looks a lot better. I don't think I have a hotkey for flipping the screen because I forgot to do that. Actions. I don't know, I do. I do have that. Also, could sometimes hate the interface on this thing. F1, there we go. Yeah, get, yeah, look at that. Looks like it's dancing. That's not good. <laughs> you don't want it to be doing that. But I think if we look here, it also kind of looks like it, but yeah, this is a little bit too much. You, you, you never want your work to be dancing when you flip the canvas. So another little, a little tip for you guys, Make sure you uh, flip your canvas very often. What is that? Oh, we're on a new layer. Interesting. <laughs> Do flip your canvas often. We will adjust these things as we go. But also, like I mentioned, the uh, the actual torso here and the ribcage aren't fully fully straight, anyways. So. Put a little block in here and let's focus on cleaning this stuff up so we can then focus on the spine because the spine in itself, if we have a look, is quite a complex part in itself. Uh, yeah, the shape is a bit weird here as we can see, but we can always go in with liquify afterwards. Again, many benefits and for those of you who do not have digital software at the moment helping you out liquify is your eraser use the eraser and just draw over it that is the best thing you can do the og liquify you know <laughs> i don't think you can fully smudge your work in like that but i mean if you were using maybe paints oil paints are very smudgeable you could kind of do a liquify. Cool. All right, we're just filling in the bones. This is mostly covered up. There's no inf like darker areas also mean there's less information to be seen. So it also, when you are drawing, it makes sense that darker areas don't have much detail. Like they're not supposed to have much detail because it's all, you know, there isn't the information there. It's, it's in darkness. You can't see the information. And what better way to put that across than not adding detail into it? All right. I think we're doing pretty well here. This is a very complicated thing and I have no idea how I'm gonna do this from memory tomorrow or the next day that we do this, but 
Man, that is... I think we're just going to have to practice this separately. And in the next video, we'll focus on the next part because I do not see myself doing this from memory and doing it in a relatively short time frame. That is just not going to happen. But yeah, okay, well, let's have a look. Flip the canvas. It's a bit weird. So we're going to go in, liquefy. And we're going to bring this out a little bit. So, yeah, a little bit better. More or less what we're looking for. Now that we have all this mess here, because this is messy, very, very messy. I'm going to clean this up a tiny bit, but also going to fill this in because obviously it's darker, it's behind. The more that we do this afterwards, obviously, the more that we practice this, the cleaner it will be because we will know these things more. But at the moment, you know, it's completely okay if it's messy. Do not worry about it being too messy. I'm going to do these little things because you can see that's uh, separating the, I think it's called vertebrae, each one of these. So let's go and draw that there. Got a little bit of a yeah, cool. This at this point we can start actually zooming in a little bit more, obviously, because we are looking at more detailed parts. This here is the same as the fingers that we were doing in the arm bones. This stuff is also very complicated. <laughs> And the shape almost just constantly repeats itself here. So I'm not going to be fully accurate with it. We are going to draw that and we'll leave it there. As you can see, my design language here is almost scribbles. But if you look at it from here, you know what's going on. You understand what, what this here shape is especially with context to the rest of the image. So you know what's going on. So by me choosing this sort of shape as my design language, you you understand what I'm talking about, but you also, like, it doesn't require me to go in and 100% copy exactly what I see here. All right, let's do the same for here. But as you can see, the spaces are larger here. There's a lot more space and they are more like, I don't know what this is called, but they're going inwards with each, each sort of step like that. So let's do that. And they're also getting bigger, which is a mistake I'm making here. So actually, I just realized it is a little bit unfair that I am using the liquify tool. So I think uh, the liquify tool and like moving these things around. <laughs> so for you guys at home who are using pen and paper, you obviously can't do that. So I'm going to stop doing that from now on. I'm sorry about that. I will do this the same way that you guys are doing it. And I'm going to focus on erasing rather than, rather than using these tools that you guys can't use. I think it's a little bit unfair. I think later on we might use them a little bit more, but at the beginning I think it's best that we just focus on the main task at hand and that's drawing. The drawing, that's the most important. I believe this is where like the pelvis will connect later on and then we've got the tailbone the end here, which also being represented by a couple squiggles here. But yeah, I think we'll leave this as it is, really. I think we're at a good spot here. This is, this was difficult. <laughs> this was very difficult. I, I did enjoy this. Though. I think very much we can learn here, but that there, is 
<sighs> the skeleton of the torso. That is a complicated one. And I think this in itself deserves another episode. So I think in a couple of days, we're going to come back to this and do it again. But at the moment, I think we're good. Like I'm going to do more practice of this at some point. And like I said, we'll come back to it. But for now, that is, that's good. I hope yours came out pretty much the same as the image, the reference image as well. I think it's going to take some time for it to look exactly like it is. And with practice, we'll get there eventually. So yeah, that's that for this, uh, for this one. That was definitely a difficult one. So don't, uh, don't be discouraged if it wasn't coming out first time. Have a go again. Again, if not, we'll, do, we'll go over something easier in the next episode. I'll pick out what it is. I mean, it might be the skull. I think the skull is a bit easier to do. So we'll focus on the skull in the next episode and we'll have a bit of a chill one. But this was definitely hard. So if you did get through it, give yourself some praise. And I'm proud of you that you did get through it. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one, which I will be recording, I think, straight after this. But yeah, I hope you did enjoy this episode. I don't know why I said that so weirdly. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, leave a like if you did. Leave a sub if you want to see more of this and if you want to carry on with the work with, with me. And I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one. Mm -hmm.